Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Episode 17, Seeding, Canning, and Cutworms. Time for a real update. Last time you guys saw him, he was in pretty bad shape. His jowls were really swollen, and uh, he was just not a happy camper. What it actually was was just fleas. It was a, a, a bad reaction to flea bites. And so what we've been doing is we got him a flea collar. We uh, have been bathing him regularly with this flea and tick shampoo that seems to help. And we've also been using these Advantix uh, drops that get into his oil, the oils of his skin, and are supposed to help you know prevent future fleas from coming on. We've also been trying to keep the house really clean, just vacuuming and disinfecting all the you know rugs and blankets and everything. Uh, he still, I think, has a flea here and there. He's still like, you can see, he's still like kind of itchy, but it's just like night and day from where he was. And so uh, we're just gonna keep on, you know, using these measures and uh, just uh, wait for winter, I guess. So this is where we wash our trays. And uh, we've just been so busy on the farm lately that it kind of piled up. I mean, it was literally up to here and out to here. And I'm starting to make a dent in it. Uh, basically, all we do is take the hose and kind of just rinse them out. And then we dunk them in a bleach solution and kind of just let them dry like this. So I'll be moving these to the greenhouse to let them dry. And that way we just kind of sterilize against any bacteria or fungus getting in there and taking out the next crop. So today is one of those days where it's a little bit sprinkling outside so I'm going to be inside and I'm basically going to be prepping and canning tomatoes. I think I'm going to make a salsa and a tomato sauce. So tomatoes are a very long process and I will go through step by step of how to can tomatoes. So these are tomatoes from our garden that were either bruised and couldn't sell or we just had too many of them. We have so many tomatoes right now so we can't eat them all, we can't sell them all so here I am canning. I use a lot of tomato sauce in my cooking so this will be really good for the winter. So first I took the core out as you see right in this compost pile. And then I put an X in the back. And the ones that were a little bit bruised, I also cut the bruise out. Next, we have a big pot of boiling water. We put the tomatoes in for one to two minutes. I find two minutes is better to loosen up the skins is what our goal is. Can you say dog? B Can you say dada? Da 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 da. So we are just seeding our winter trays. This is uh, primarily all going to be lettuce of the Salanova variety, and then we are seeding a little bit of uh, Bright Lights Swiss chard as well. Um, so we're just dropping these little pelleted seeds. Always opt for the pelleted lettuce seeds when um, when sowing flats because otherwise lettuce seeds are so tiny and very hard to actually get a single seed into the hole so yeah that's that we're probably just going to uh, you know these things should be about ready to go into the field in three weeks so that's kind of the end of September and then that'll give us the month of October to really get them up to full size and then by November they'll pretty much stop growing and we'll cover them up and we'll just kind of harvest them as we need. 
today we just did 12. So we've been doing anywhere from between 8 and 12 uh, a week. We did some uh, winter boar kale, lots of lettuce, lots of lettuce, and um, more lettuce. And anything like spinach and carrots and beets, of course, is all just going to be direct seeded. So, yeah. so now that we've seeded our trays, we're just going to water them in. Uh, I put it on a light shower setting. You want to get enough water in there to break the outer coating of the uh, seed, but not too much because if the cells are too wet, the seeds won't germinate. So we're just going to do a light watering for now. We're going to let it soak in, and then I'll come back and I'll do another light watering. Okay, so here we are in, in our hoop house, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, seed germination. So our lettuce that we were starting, uh, we were having a lot of trouble with it and we just couldn't get really good germination. Sometimes we were getting almost 0% germination on some of these trays, which the lettuce seed that we use is actually really expensive. So um, it was really frustrating. And however, I think we have hacked it. So um, if you want to take a look, and this was probably, this is kind of what we were getting was just, you know, really spotty germination. Some there's only three. You know, others, it's a little bit better. I think the Cherokee probably did better than any of them. And I didn't know if it was our potting mix or if we were watering too much or not enough. But I think really what it comes down to is just not having the optimal temperatures. We got really good germination in the spring and then at the height of the summer, we were just dealing with that. So the ideal germination temperature for uh, lettuce seed is between 60 and 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so what we did, because it's typically way hotter than that, you know, even at night, um, is we actually would just seed water and then put it in the walk-in cooler where we can actually set it to about 64, 65. And this is the result. So I'm super stoked to see this. Um, these are going to be our, 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 our fall slash winter Salanova lettuces. And I mean, this is just great to see. So almost 100% germination on some of these and just a really good feeling that we uh, figured it out. Okay, so another one of the challenges we've been working on recently is cutworms. Uh, they have been attacking our yeah. loose leaf baby greens and it's been really frustrating. It took me a little while to figure out yeah. what it was. I would just come down here and I would just see whole patches of lettuce that were just, had, had just pretty much rotted away and you get this just like this and you can see these are the eggs um, the cutworms themselves are actually kind of hard to find. They tend to burrow during the day, so you just kind of come out and see um, the after effects of it. Uh, so, our solution after doing a little bit of research was to um, buy some beneficial nematodes, uh, which are basically microscopic organisms. It comes in a pouch, it's like a powder. I can show you guys it later. And just basically mixing that with water and just spraying it on here, trying to get it down to the soil layer. And what the nematodes will do is they'll go in the soil and they will actually wait for the cutworms to come by and then they'll attack them. So this is our, and actually I think it's been, it's been, it's been working. Um, I, I'm still in the process of applying it, but some of the newer beds I've planted, um, such as like this one, I haven't seen any cutworm damage yet. So. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that, but for right now it seems to be working. So, keep the nematodes in the walk-in cooler. They say to refrigerate them. Typically our cooler's about 37 degrees, so that's perfect. All it is, I mean, for a hundred bucks, this is what you get, a hundred million nematodes. And they're basically just like a powder. Um, so, you just take a teaspoon and the dose rate is one teaspoon per gallon. So this is about a three gallon sprayer pack and uh, kind of just want to use these guys up. So I'm going to do a hefty dose. Yeah, let's just use them all up. Huh? So yeah, just this powder and then uh, since we sterilize our water with calcium hypochlorite, and I'm afraid that might actually kill the nematodes, we're actually going to go get some water down by the creek uh, just to kind of be on the safe side. Alright, so they say to spray at night. 
And I guess that's probably because you want to get the nematodes into the ground before the sun comes up, because the sun might burn them off, that's my guess. And it's best to do it when your bed, after you've just seeded a bed, or once the seeds, uh, once the, the crop is really small like this, so you can get, you know, maximum uh, soil contact. And just kind of go up and down the bed. They say to do like one gallon per bed. I think that's a bit much. Uh, you know, I've been spacing it out. I just kind of go at this pace. And you know, these nematodes are going to reproduce. So I just try to get a little one, a little bit to each bed. And uh, we've pretty much covered this whole plot. I've actually already hit this bed once. I'm just going through and hitting it again because um, I, for some reason these cutworms don't bother anything else, but they go after the loose leaf greens, especially when they're in the baby stage. If you guys like this video and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.